Hi, and thank you for listening. This is Sherry Andrea. If you're looking for me, you can always find me at SherrySpeaks.com. There you can find all different so- sorts of stuff like um, Reiki attunements, custom Reiki, cer- Reiki certificates. Um, you can read up about a lot of different things. Um, there's lots of stuff you can go there. You can see for yourself. Just browse around. Today, right now, I'd like to talk to you. And, you know, this may not end up being the title of the video because sometimes I do, you know, do the video. And then I go to put the title in I thought it was going to be and I realize it needs to be something slightly different. So, um, but what we're going to be discussing is things that are right, that feel foreign to you. Um, This comes up actually a lot. I'll give you one example of where this comes up. Um, There are many people I've actually attuned to Reiki or who have gotten attuned by someone else who will email me and say, can you unattune me? You know, I don't really know where this whole unattune me concept came from. Um, I'm not really sure what gave people that idea. I guess they figure, you know, if you can do something amazing, like attune someone to someone, to something, well, you should be able to undo it. But anyway, um, a lot of times when I ask them, well, what is it? Why do you want to be unattuned? Why are you asking this? And they'll often say how they've been feeling since the attunement. Um, And often what they're experiencing is, and many of you may know this, is at a higher vibratory state, of course, you feel different. Now, this is more noticeable to some than to others. However, the highly sensitive person would, of course, notice it even more. So let's say you've got two people. One is highly sensitive. Maybe um, they can easily feel energy. And then the other one is um, they've been at a low vibration for a while. They haven't really awakened. They're very unsensitive. Um, Spirit could be slapping them in the back of their head. They're not going to feel anything. I know that's a weird way for me to put that, but (laughs) let's just go with it. Um, So you've got these two people. One sensitive, one is not. Okay, so the one who is overly sensitive, when I go to attune them, they're going to feel everything at such a heightened level that it may not feel comfortable to them. Because think about it, um, they may be going to the heights of a vibratory level they've never been at before. They've never experienced that vibratory level before never experienced it, didn't know what to experience, didn't know what to expect, nothing. So now that they're there, it, they may describe it in a way where they say it doesn't feel good to them. They may say like, it doesn't feel right. I feel like something is wrong. My attunement must have been done wrong. You know, um, it's still, or they have this um, feeling, this this idea that something about their attunement is still going. Like, like the the attunement happened. They started feeling that energy running through them, and it just never stopped. Um, so they may describe it in different ways, like that. What it is is that they're in a new place that they've never been before. And I think a lot of people don't realize that when they're going to get something like a Reiki attunement. It's like moving. When you move, you're going to pack up your belongings and you're going to move to a new house, new neighborhood, around new people. Your kids are going to go to different schools. Everything's going to be new. Maybe you'll even get a new job. And that's a lot of adjustment, right? You have to adjust all those things. We have to get used to where the light switches are in our our new house. We have to get used to the amount of space we have in our new house because maybe we're downsizing. Now we've got to make that adjustment to work with less space or more space. Maybe it's more space and we just don't have the furniture to fill it. And at first it just doesn't feel good to us because we're walking into rooms that look like like we're like living like poor people because we didn't have enough furniture to fill the space. And maybe every time we walk in there, we're just going to be feeling like, you know, this just 
doesn't look right. Yeah, it's okay, but it doesn't look right. Maybe you'll move to some place that's, maybe the energy of the place will be so different or so not in balance with you that you'll just say things like, I never really felt comfortable living there in that house, in that neighborhood, in that state. Because maybe you felt that imbalance within you. You felt that there wasn't a good balance. Um, sometimes it's just simply because we've gone to a new place that we've never been before. Whether or not you're um, on a path to become a healer, psychic, whether you're working on spiritual advancement, you want to be a channeler, you're heading towards becoming a spiritual teacher, spiritual coach, and you're working on yourself, you're meditating every day, maybe you're even working on your chakras, you're working on those unresolved issues, you're working on self-realization, do you think that you're going to be staying in the same place? No, it's likened to packing your bags and moving. So you're literally, you're going to a new place. Things are going to be different and they're going to feel different. So right now, let me skip ahead a little bit um, to the part of, let's, let's forget about that for a second. Let's skip to the, well, what do you do? And I'll use myself as an example because I don't mind. Um, about three years ago, I have sickle cell. About three years ago, for the very first time in my life, and I won't tell you how old I am, but um, let's just say it was a while. I'm older than 30. <laughs> but anyway, um, I had never experienced um, we, um, having low oxygen levels. Um, so I, I had this experience where my oxygen levels got really, really low. And all of a sudden I couldn't communicate properly. That's how it affected me. And that's really the only way I noticed how it affected me. I was a little restless um, and I couldn't communicate. I, my thinking was just fine. And that was what made it so frustrating was that someone could ask me a question. They could say, who's the president of the United States? And I knew who that was. But then when I would go to open my mouth to speak it, it just wouldn't come out right. You know, there was a lot of hesitation, a lot of stuttering, a lot of, I just couldn't spit it out. And then when I finally would get some words out, it would be the wrong thing. You know, it's like meaning to say red and you finally spit it out and you say blue. And um, I remember the first couple of times I did it, I was just like, I wasn't that frustrated at first. But then the more um, people tried to communicate with me, just simple things, like give me your full name again. You know, give me your social security number. You know how if you're in the hospital, you know, they're always, they're checking the badges, the, the arm badges that they put on you and always reconfirming by having you say what your name is, social security number or last four digits and um, maybe in your date of birth. And so, you know, in a short span of time, you know, many people may ask you the same question. So... We'd already established that I was, I had low oxygen levels and I was having trouble communicating and, but they kept asking me those questions anyway. And then they would get frustrated with me because I was having such a hard time communicating it. And it was taking me so long that by the time they would realize that, you know, okay, she's not going to be able to communicate this just you know, easily, quickly, they would get frustrated with me and annoyed and just say, oh, never mind, never mind, just forget it. And I remember it was so funny because um, they gave me a blood transfusion. And I remember, you know, just thinking in my mind, I wonder how long it's going to take 
before my oxygen levels were back to normal, you know, they were also giving me oxygen. But them just giving me oxygen wasn't like, it. you know, it did nothing instantaneously just because, you know, I, they were giving me oxygen. That didn't help at all. Um, and I remember thinking, wondering how long is this effect from low oxygen levels gonna last you know like as the blood transfusion was going you know I'm looking at the bag and I'm thinking okay it's half full now you know and I'm thinking okay I wonder if it's taken any effect and I what I would do is I had a piece of paper and so I would try to write my phone number down and of course I could think my phone number just fine but then trying to write it down or trying to speak it I couldn't and I remember how frustrating it was. Not only were people getting frustrated with me, but it was the one of the worst experiences of my life. Um, that's when I realized how much I valued being able to communicate. And I realized that as I got older, I thought to myself, you know, as I get older and maybe when I'm elderly, if I, if this is how I'm affected by having trouble communicating, I don't know how I'm going to deal with it. I remember I used to, you know, I thought that at the time. And um, it was kind of scary. Um, but I, fast forward, I got better, right? Um, but then I noticed within the next couple of years, something was going on with my memory. Now, at first, I had, I was at first assuming that maybe I was still being affected somehow from that time when I was in the hospital with the low oxygen level. It's just that the timing of when that happened and me noticing that I was having trouble every now and then communicating, basically suddenly being at a loss for a certain word um suddenly just losing not a lot but sometimes like losing my train of thought and having to stop for a moment you know stop relax for a few moments take a couple deep breaths wait for it to come back <laughs> and at first i thought this was a medical issue i was having turns out it wasn't you know, these wonderful, surprising things that you experience while you're on a spiritual path. I'm going to try to explain that to you the best way I can. When you're working on self-realization and you're working to let go of living in your mind and your mind controlling things, your mind always thinking, thinking, thinking and always being busy, you know, and as you're working on yourself spiritually and you're meditating and you're trying to not get control of that, you're actually trying to kind of leave that. You're trying to put it down. You're trying to no longer live within your mind. You're trying to just get to this point where you just simply exist, where you just simply are. Where there's no need to explain that, you just simply are. You know, there's no need to um, put a lot of thought into things. It's just living in the now, which means what am I doing now? I may be taking some action right now, but I didn't need to um, think about it for a while before. Like, for example, I'm doing, you know, this video right now, but... I didn't need to spend the last two days thinking about it. You know, I didn't have to. Um, also, you know, you, we're also working on losing things like living in the past. While at the same time being surrounded by a lot of people who still live that way, we're trying to overcome that. So a lot of times when you're on a spiritual path, you don't know what's waiting for you. You don't know what's going to happen um, once you achieve some spiritual advancement. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what you're going to experience. You don't know how it's going to be. Some people might have you under the impression it's going to be all love and light and 
every day, no matter what, is going to seem sunny and it's going to be all smelling like flowers, smelling like roses. Um, and they may have you under the impression that everything's going to be good, everything's going to be perfect. But of course, at the time, you know, what was your concept of perfect? What was your idea of perfect? You know, for some people who are on a spiritual path, their idea of perfect is just nothing. You know, perfect is nothing. You know, I, like some people might ask you, well, don't, you know, don't you like to do this? Don't you hate to like not have anything to do? Don't you hate to be alone? Don't you, you know, don't you want to do that? Actually, those are hard questions for me to ask because it requires me to live at somebody else's level and within their perception. And it's very difficult because you know, um, my answer to all of those things would be no, but at the same time, you don't want to make someone feel bad, making them feel like, oh, like, you know, you don't do this. So you're saying there's something wrong with me. So I'm, I tend to be very careful about like just telling people, no, I don't like to do that. No, I don't like, because I don't want to make them feel bad or self-conscious. So usually I agree with them. Usually I just nod my head. I'm like, yeah, I know what you mean, you know, because I do. But the thing is, is that I did have a really hard time um, dealing with that change because I didn't know what it was at first. I thought it was a health issue. So, of course, I kept remembering that time when I was in the hospital and what a bad experience that was not to be able to properly communicate with people. I couldn't even tell them my phone number. I wanted them to call my mother for me and I couldn't tell them my phone number. And I'm like, oh my gosh, here I am. I mean, I could have been in prison. You know what I mean? That's how it felt. I could have been in prison because I felt like here I am. There is nothing I can do but just lay here and wait for this to pass, not knowing how long it was going to take. There is nothing I can do but just lay here and forget about it. And at, at one point, I eventually did do that. At one point, I did say, okay, Sherry, there isn't anything you can do. It's going to take time before this, this, the symptom of low oxygen level goes away. There's nothing you can do. You know what? Just relax, take a nap, don't worry about it. And that's what I finally did. Um... But it can be really scary if you're thinking what you're experiencing is a health issue. If your perception of it is that something is wrong. And that's what I was thinking. I was thinking, you know, something's wrong. Because I notice I'm talking to people and just suddenly I'm at a loss for a certain word. You know, I'm going to tell them about a certain spiritual teacher that I always talk about and suddenly I can't remember that spiritual teacher's name. My friend Kier, um, there are certain spiritual um, teachers he likes to listen to. And I swear to you, every time we talk about them or I say, oh, remember how you know they did this video or that video and we're talking about a, a certain subject that they spoke on, I have to ask him again, okay, wait, what were their names again? And at first, like I said, I w was a little worried because I thought it was a health issue. And then uh, one day I realized it's not a health issue. Um, actually, I listened to this uh, video that Muji did, M-O-O-J-I, and it was called Divine Amnesia is what he called, what the video was named. I don't know if that's what he calls it, but his peoples named the video Divine Amnesia. And recent, most recently, it's one of the best videos I've listened to. You know, not only was I able to realize from it that I didn't have a health problem <laughs> and that it had to do with getting to a level where finally I wasn't living in the mind and realizing the fear that I was feeling over it was 
me just simply not being comfortable with it because I had never lived outside of the mind before. It was something that I need to adjust to more. Um, but it was the fear about it that got me and that there, there are many changes that you're going to go through where at first your first reaction may to say something is wrong or to question that something may be wrong. Um, unfortunately, as you're working on yourself and you're, you know, you're advancing, yes, it's true. I mean, many of these things, they're just not talked about a lot. And so you're left to figure them out for yourself. And sometimes you don't even know how to search for it on the internet because what you're experiencing, you don't even know what to call it. You know, I couldn't have looked this up on the internet because, you know, um, what would I have called it, you know? Um, so, but I was eventually guided to the answer. I was guided to the answer of what's going on with me, what I'm experiencing. And then when I realized, you know, what I'm dealing with most that was affecting me was fear, just fear that it was a health issue, fear that it was some bad sign. Once I realized, yeah, it was just fear and that nothing's actually wrong. I just need to go with this. I need to go with this and I need to understand this is the new normal. You know, we have ideas um, about what's normal. Well, this is the new norm. You know, like they say that saying, this is the new black. This is the new normal, okay? And you're going to hit a lot of new normals. And sometimes you're going to realize what's going on and many times you're not. And you're just going to simply think something's not right. Just like the people that get attuned to Reiki and what they end up experiencing and feeling is overwhelming for them because they are so highly sensitive. Don't fall prey to it. Don't take action based on something that's not real and something that's no more than a misunderstanding about what's going on with you. Because once you realize what's going on with you, like for example, you know, if you did get attuned to Reiki and it was a little overwhelming for you because you're highly sensitive, instead of trying to leave Reiki, why don't you find out how you tone that down? What you can do for yourself if you're highly sensitive to tone things down a bit so that you could kind of feel like, oh, okay, it's even just balanced out. I can, I can deal with this instead of running away from it. Anything worth having, I know I've said this so many times before, anything worth having is not only worth working for, but worth going through those times, those uncomfortable times for. And you will go through some uncomfortable times. But don't let fear have you wanting to stop or run in the other direction. Don't let it having you second guess yourself. Don't, and be careful who you share these things with. Because there are some people that, um, they have a background where they might tell you, oh, that's evil, negative, dark energy. Oh, you're possessed. Oh, you're this. Oh, you're that. Oh, you're experiencing this. Because they'll scare you even more. They'll have you even more in that state of feeling like something major is wrong. Don't second guess yourself. You have to trust the universe. You have to trust spirit, trust the angels, trust the ascended masters, trust your higher self. Your higher self will never steer you wrong. So if you just simply trust your higher self, everything will be okay. It's okay to say, I don't know what this is. I don't know what's going on, but I know that everything is okay and that eventually I'll figure it out. Eventually the answer will come to me. So don't be afraid of the new things that are going to feel foreign to you. If you are working on yourself or if you're working on metaphysics, spirituality, whatever it is you're working on, 
expect different. You didn't expect yourself to stay where you were at. No, you were trying to advance, learn something new, get better at something. And with that, you're going to change. You're going to be in a new place. You're going to be that new person. And change is sometimes feels uncomfortable. Talk to a friend about it. If it's really feeling that uncomfortable to you, talk to someone about it. Um, if it's really, really feeling that uncomfortable to you, then, I mean, you could always schedule a coaching session with me. You know, you know, go to my website. Under services, you'll see an intuitive coaching. You know, schedule a $10, you know, coaching session. And I'll help give you some ideas of some things that you can try to make you more comfortable while you're working through this, while you're going through this. It's usually only a period of time that you're going through these adjustments before your new place starts feeling normal to you again. So we just need to help you get to that point so we can help you hang in there until you get to that point where now you're feeling like you're in a normal place again. Well, I hope that this short, short video about advancing and things not feeling normal to you anymore, I hope that this was helpful. Maybe for some of you, it explains something that you've experienced before, but you just didn't kind of know what it was or what to call it or... <laughs> And if you'd like, remember, um, the video that I referenced was Muji's M-O-O-J-I, Divine Amnesia. He's awesome. And um, feel free to take a listen to the video. You'll like it. Muji is also very funny. Um, so the way he explains things and puts things are actually sometimes will have you laughing hysterically. Well, I look forward to talking with you next time. I hope you have a wonderful day. Namaste.